right hello everyone once again for the third time welcome to logic school of management and this is our program on company secretaryship course and i know you guys are uh, doing your degree you have completed your degree some of you have completed your plus 2 some of you are doing law and i'd like to introduce to you our special guest his name is uh, sherry umman he is a chartered accountant he is a management accountant he is a company secretary as well as a lawyer and i've known sherry sir for a very long time the first time uh, i'm seeing sherry sir is when i saw him perform music on stage back in 2012 ever since then i've attended a lot of sherry sir's classes uh, orientation program for chartered accountancy and the gmc's programs um some of my friends close friends have worked with sherry sir a lot of uh, programs regarding subjective courses have done by sherry sir which i was lucky enough to attend and today i'm proud to present him to all of you uh he he has immense experience in a lot of areas in a lot of professional areas he have been uh, experienced in big fours he have managed uh, the tax department at kpmg uh, he is also the founder for nash capital partners and today uh, we are here he is here with us to specifically talk about the company secretaryship course and why choosing that course can give you a glorified career in corporate law so i'm not uh, prolonging my introduction uh, sherry sir over to you sir thank you so much hari for these uh, for these short little sweet words about me i am deeply indebted and honored for these short words of praise um, uh, am i am i audible to am i audible to the i'm assuming that i'm audible to everyone hmm? yeah very nice very nice yeah now thank you ma'am now one of the the interesting aspects of having a call on an app such as zoom is that you tend to look at yourself and speak whereas if it was a session that you had with uh, in a public forum you invariably tend to see faces but here the beauty of the zoom app is that you tend to look at your own face point number 1 and point number 2 you see a lot of blank screens uh, so you so i would like to believe that uh, that what i say will be understood by the participants on this call and i hope that at the end of the session young students will at least get an idea about the course and uh, and uh, a way forward in terms of what are the options that this course has so very briefly to introduce myself as uh, hari mentioned um, i am an accidental chartered accountant uh, i am now practicing as a lawyer i i have cleared the company secretaryship course and i have cleared the cost accountancy course uh, if you ask me this question as to why did i why did i take so many degrees to my name and i have a very interesting uh, story to that and i'll just tell that short little story uh, before i get into the discussion so when i during my days of uh, at chennai where i did my uh, with my article ship um i one of the beautiful aspects of chennai is that it's highly driven from a cultural standpoint and invariably as a as a young growing handsome adult uh, invariably when you pass through kalyana mandapam so kalyana mandapam is a place where typically marriages are uh, are held so you would see uh, let's say uh, chiranjeevi x getting married to let's say saubhagyavati y and um, invariably if you said chiranjeevi x wed saubhagyavati y you would have the degrees of chiranjeevi s x and the degrees of the, of saubhagyavati y so for example if you were to go through nungambakkam lane in in chennai uh, there are very interesting placards kept for example you will have chiranjeevi let's say chiranjeevi mr x and his qualification would be 10 standard pass or 12 standard pass and the degree for for the saubhagyavati y would be bcom or mcom so that was possibly one of the reasons why i decided to do a number of courses for the simple reason that if i got married uh, if i got married i think the only thing that that i could add to my tag would have been my degrees 
So that was the reason why I did take these degrees. Having said so much, I'm, uh, I think these degrees have actually helped me in my professional pursuit. Now to those on this call, I'm given to understand that most of you all are students. Some of you all have cleared your, or other are doing your plus two. Some of you all are pursuing law or some of you all have completed law. The essential issue for discussion here is what is the relevance of the company secretaryship course? Now in this lockdown period, I can't think of a better opportune moment to pursue courses whereby you can improve yourself professionally. And to me, the CS course is a perfect recipe, especially if you're keen to pursue a career in corporate law. Now, why do I say this? Is for the simple reason that the role of a company secretary, if one looks at the Companies Act 1956 and the Companies Act 2013, there is a, a manifest change in the role of a company secretary. Now, one thing which I would urge y'all on this call, and I'm taking this for granted that y'all are looking at CS course as, as an option that y'all are seriously considering. On this premise, I would clearly urge y'all to consider the option of pursuing this course. Now, very briefly, in terms of what is, what is the expectation from a company secretary, from a company secretary. Now, one, as the name would suggest, the key role of the company secretary would be in terms of advising the board of directors of a company with respect to corporate governance, with respect to key decisions that the board is taking. For example, um, during, my, during my days of articleship, I was in fact interacting with a company secretary of a leading listed company in Chennai, where the pivotal role of the company secretary was with respect to a proposed acquisition, proposed overseas acquisition. And this was one of the largest acquisitions that happened uh, in, the early to, in the early 2000s. So the role of a company secretary has, in fact, in my view, drastically changed from being a secretary of sorts to a person who plays a pivotal role in the decisions that a company takes. So like I mentioned in this, in this company that I, was talk, uh, that I was referring to, which is again a listed company, the company secretary played a pivotal role in terms of one, identifying the target where the acquisition would happen, point number one. And point number two was discussions with the target company on the various terms. And number three, and most importantly, was actually concluding the deal. Now, if you were to ask me the kind of exposure that y'all would get, especially from the angle, especially from, am I, am I audible? I just got a message, can't hear anything. It's audible to us. It's audible to us. Harishri, I think you may- uh, Dear to... students, uh, dear students, kindly check your audio settings. It is on the bottom left corner of the Zoom app. And uh, in, in case do you want to respond to anything during the conversation, kindly use the chat option. Okay, sir, please continue. Thank you. So Rupashri, I hope you can, I hope you can, uh, okay, I think Neetu, I hope Neetu Paul's message is to Rupashri. Um, and anyway, I'll assume it's not to me. If I'm not audible, uh, Hari, please let me know. Huh? If I, or if I'm a little too fast, please let me know. Will do, sir. Okay. Now, um, now, um, so in the example that I that I mentioned, that I mentioned, the role of the company secretary was in the context of an acquisition. Now, I'm assuming that most of y'all in this conversation are uh, are let's say in the early twenties, are early in the uh, are in the early twenties. In my view, assuming that you all clear the company secretaryship course. If you all are appointed to the role of a company secretary, let's say of a listed company like, my, let's say like uh, Infosys, or you, or let's say Biocon, the only person 
who has a direct access i repeat a direct access to the board is the company secretary now for example when i did my article ship when i did my article ship in the big fours invariably in most audit committee meetings or for that matter in most meetings that you have with the board for example i had the i had the uh, the opportunity of in fact um, working on the wipro audit so in the opportunity that i got in the big four in during the course of the audit a common factor that was there across the meetings that one would have with the key managerial personnel of various companies was a common factor namely the company secretary of the company so just for a moment visualize yourself you know let's say you let's say hypothetically let's say you all start the course right now i i just visualize for yourself let's say you're 23 years of age let's say it takes 3 years time to complete the course so let's say you're 26 just imagine at the age of 26 stroke 27 you would be possibly and if you're really really good i think that's what you should aspire to be you would be possibly rubbing shoulders with the who's who of the indian of the indian industry so consider for a moment let's assume that you were to get into unless any listed company so to speak any meeting which is convened by the board of directors of that company let's say be it a wipro be it an infosys or be it a company from kerala let's say like muthoot finance for that matter you all directly rub shoulders with the board so the only person that you are technically accountable to is the board so view yourself imagine as a 26 year old adult or as a young man or young woman the fact that at such a young ripe age your only node or rather only mode of 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 discussion is the top level management this to me is this to me is of is one of the most interesting aspects of this profession which in my view uh, i say this for the fact that i'm a ca and a, and a cost accountant as well that unlike the two other professions this is one profession where at a really young age you have a direct access to the board and imagine the kind of exposure that you would get for example i i had another chance of working on the uh, on the listing uh, listing um, of another company and i'll say this because this is a matter in public domain right now for example in 2005 2006 there's a company named sun tv that decided to list itself um so in the discussions that we had with the management again there was a common factor again the company secretary was involved because at the end of the day he plays the pivotal role with respect to disclosures that the directors make so to cut the long story short a course which gives you direct access to the board of a company a course which gives you direct access in terms of rubbing shoulders with the who's who of industry in my view the only course which gives you that opportunity at such a young age and i stress the word at such a young age is only the cs course now when i dealt with the aspect of the role of the company secretary with respect to supporting the board of directors the second thing what a company secretary would typically do is taking care of corporate governance so for example if you look at a listed company there are certain corporate governance aspects that a listed company is mandated to perform so this is one aspect that the company secretary is required to ensure that these are necessarily undertaken number 3 would be for example ensuring statutory and regulatory compliances the fourth angle and this is a very important aspect as well you may ask me so what to me the company secretary is the pillar and i'm stressing the word is the pillar for the internal affairs of a company why do i say so you become you become the essential node of communication between the board of directors and various other stakeholders consider for a moment you are the company secretary of a listed company 
let's take for for our let's say for discussion purposes you're the you're the company secretary of let's say let's say uh, reliance communication for a moment again visualize yourself who will you, who will you be rubbing your shoulders against you'd be rubbing the shoulders against the man the gentleman who's possibly i mean is i wouldn't use the word possibly who is indeed the richest man in this country right now number one number two imagine for a moment that you would be advising mr mukesh ambani on key corporate aspects again imagine for a moment that you at the end of the day would be the communication link between all the shareholders of reliance vis-a-vis -vis the board of directors so that's the kind of role that a company secretary encompasses so so that's why i'm using the word a pillar when you say a pillar it means it means an edifice of strength so that's why you i use the word pillar and for which reason i state that the, this profession allows you to be the essential communication link between the board of directors on one angle the shareholders on the other angle thirdly even with, with respect to regulatory authorities as well so for example let's say you're dealing with sebi or let's say you're dealing with the stock exchanges at the end of the day you become the voice of the company it is your job to defend number one it is your job to advise and that's why i say that at a, such a young age the profession that gives you this kind of access this kind of responsibility is the cs profession another interesting aspect of this profession is the fact that a cs is required to keep records so in a strict sense a company secretary is also a record keeper now you may ask me this question so what am i at the end of the day playing the role of a warehouse agent is my job just to stock information no please note and i'm saying this with a lot of sincerity of heart in most cases of corporate frauds in most cases of corporate frauds uh, um i will have a small little request i assure you that i will end this discussion let's say at 9:45 9:50 uh if you all can uh, keep your questions towards the end uh that will be easier in terms of responding other invariably my i tend to get distracted so if you can keep your questions uh towards the end i assure you i will not run away uh, i've told myself that i will spend time with you all in fact got permission from my wife so i will indeed spend time with you all and ensure that i uh, address your questions and this will just break my flow apart uh so where was i yeah so coming back to the what i was mentioning with respect to a record keeper now you may ask me this question sir at the end of the day am i like am i like a person like a warehouse keeper is my job just to stock information the answer to that is no why do i say so in most corporate frauds that happen in this country in my view because of the lack of corporate governance there has been an increase in the rise of corporate frauds now when you say that you're the record keeper and i'm saying this with a lot of with a lot of uh, with a lot of commitment in mind and a lot of seriousness with a lot of seriousness as well the company secretary is the conscience of the company now why do i use the word conscience of the company if a company has good corporate governance the credit for that has to go to the company secretary because at the end of the day it is his onerous responsibility if a company lacks corporate governance in my view and i'm saying this with a lot of commitment and with a lot of sincerity of heart that the fault would obviously lie with the company secretary as well and that's the reason why in terms of ensuring that india is a clean india in so far as corporate governance is concerned this profession plays the role of a conscience keeper the conscience keeper of a company in ensuring that everything that is done by the company is in accordance with the law so we've dealt with one side of one side of the profession where you become a whole time company secretary and then you advise the management that is one side of the discussion is that the only aspect that this course offers the answer to that is obviously no you may for example decide i want to practice independently great 
So if you decide to practice independently, what are the options that lie ahead? And I'm saying this now with uh, saying this now now for the fact that I'm practicing right now as a lawyer. In most courts that I practice in in the high courts uh, in the high courts across South India, and more specifically the high courts of Kerala, a few judges, uh, uh, quite a few judges, where I appear, especially with respect to corporate law cases. Uh, and in the NCLT as well, the National Company Law Tribunal and the uh, National Company Law Appellate Tribunal in Delhi. Most of them know about the fact that I am a company secretary by profession as well. Now, how does that help? Now, invariably, when you get into an interpretation of law, it is without doubt that the knowledge that you get insofar as corporate law is concerned, when you study the company secretary course, gives you an additional edge in comparison with that of a lawyer. And that's the reason why I'm suggesting for lawyers that intend to pursue corporate law as a stream, you all must learn the CS course. The reason is the exposure that you get whilst doing the course, you just cannot compare it with the exposure that you get whilst you do your LLB or your uh, BA LLB honors. In courts that you appear, let's assume you decide to go and practice on your own. The exporter that you get, point number one, and number two, the kind of reputation that you build in courts, number three, the kind of respect that judges have, especially when you're a company secretary, gives you a clear, distinct, a clear distinctive factor. And for which reason I would clearly advocate that if there are lawyers in amongst your uh, who have completed law and who are looking at corporate law as an area of practice, I would clearly urge you all to pursue CS course. Because let me tell you, in most cases that are argued in the NCLP or NCLAT, this key to a victory, and I'm using this very selectively here, the key to a victory invariably lies in the procedure. And that's the reason why a CS, the knowledge of CS, helps for the fact that you are one conceptually strong point of one and number two for the fact that your procedural clarity is high this definitely gives you a distinctive edge in comparison with with lawyers and for which reason i would clearly advocate especially if you are looking at pursuing corporate law as an area of practice in my view cs is a must and there is no portal in my mind. Please do understand one aspect, my dear friends, and I'm taking this liberty of calling you all uh, my younger brothers and sisters here. Uh, the point is, For I have had the opportunity of, of, going, of working outside of Kerala. And the moment you step outside Valayar check post, which leads you into Tamil Nadu and then onward, and as you practice in the other courts outside of Kerala, you will suddenly realize for a moment that, hang on, the guys who are there in the court have additional degrees to their name. And very clearly, it is very, very vivid that a judge tends to respect a person who has that additional qualification for the fact that the judge knows that the person in question is talking from the specialized knowledge that he has acquired courtesy of the course. So that's one reason why I would clearly advocate doing the CS course. The second aspect is in the event you decide to pursue the CS course in your own capacity, is one the, the avenue of the avenue of doing what you call as a secretarial audit. And this, for example, um, the Act, the Companies Act 2013, makes the secretarial audit a mandatory prerequisite. So that's another aspect that you will get as a ready as a ready, uh, rather as a recurring income, as a recurring income. So to summarize why the CS course, one, as I said, the kind of support that you give to the board of directors of the company. Number two, at a, such a young age, and take my word for a, for a moment, if you start visualizing yourself and say, my God, imagine a 28 guy or a 28 year old girl having the opportunity to rub shoulders with, with let's say, Mr. Mukesh Ambani. 
my dear this is not this is not utopia because uh, i have had ex- i have had experiences when i was as as young as you all of meeting the likes of narayan murthy of meeting the likes of azim premji in my role in my professional role as well and at the end of the day i'd like to believe that the exposure that i had rubbing shoulders with them has obviously given me a different perspective to life and that's one reason why i believe that you all should pursue this course the third one that i said was a cs is the pillar in so far as the internal affairs of the company number four that i said was that the cs is the conscience keeper for the company and the reason why i said conscience keeper was with respect to the fact that the cs plays the role of ensuring that there is good corporate governance the fifth aspect that i mentioned was with respect to record keeping then after that i got into the aspect of in the event you decide to pursue cs uh, independently what are the avenues that are there one is if you intend to take up litigation as a matter of practice then obviously this is a clear edge and i clearly advocate lawyers you all should do cs if you all are pursuing corporate law as an area of practice without which let me assure you it is extremely difficult to understand the vagaries of law the second thing that i also mentioned was with respect to the avenue of corporate of secretarial audit which has now become a mandatory prerequisite so very briefly i have touched on the cs course and what it does and what are the kind of opportunities that are there to briefly talk on the structure of the course and i'd like to spend maybe 5 or 6 minutes to talk on the structure of the course any questions till now do you have any questions till now that you would like to ask then i'll i'll address that and move to the uh, move to the next so i have seen one question from uh, so we are directly accountable and part of the board then we would also be liable so so i would like to know that if we can manage such liabilities at such a young age uh shiva that's a nice question and i would like to just make this make this point to you um you can swim only if you decide to jump into the water but if you fear that you will drown you will never jump into the water and i say this not with an element uh, of sarcasm or do i intend to be facetious but the imagine for a moment that i'm i'm taking this for granted that you all that you are in your early 20s imagine that as at a such at, at a such a young age uh, at a such a young age again like i mentioned back to you again that the opportunity that you have to rub shoulders with the best in the world i mean i I, I mean this is not a motivational motivational discussion that i'm having with you all but for a moment for a moment just fantasize that moment i mean think in your mind i mean assume for yourselves that you all are that you all are leading these kind of responsibilities and i would like to believe that the fear of a liability should not be a reason to say okay man i i fear that i may get caught and hence i won't dream i mean this to me uh, i mean this to me is is uh, is strange um you may for example say okay but i don't want to work with a listed company because i fear that there's a lot of fraud blah 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 let's change the story a bit more let's assume that you become the company secretary of microsoft india okay you have the choice imagine for a moment that when bill gates when bill gates comes to india imagine shiba for a moment bill gates says shiba i'd like to have a discussion with you and i'd like to know where my company is please tell me where i'm going wrong and that is the kind of avenues that the cs enjoys and more specifically you have the right to ensure that you participate in such meetings which for example a, a, i mean a pure play charter accountant let's say there's a young charter accountant he joins he does not have the right to attend a board meeting of a company whereas as a company secretary you have that right that's precisely why i advocate saying that the cs course gives you that access now what you do with it is your prerogative you could be like i said the conscience keeper of the company or you could say i care to hoots about the conscience let it go the way it chooses to go <clears throat> but the moot point here is the fact that you have this access the fact that at the end of the day at such a young age at such a young age you can get to manage the affairs of a company and to me uh, and i say this for the fact that i have uh, in my experience I've, i mean i've dealt with a lot of people and there are quite a few in- people that have actually inspired me and i've just stayed a, sh- a state a short little story uh, 
for the fact that Sheba has asked this question. Um, so I studied in a college called St. Joseph's College of Commerce uh, in Bangalore. And I, uh, and coincidentally, uh, Rahul Dravid was my senior in college, uh, was a few years senior to me in college. Uh, for most of y'all who follow cricket, Dravid was never, was never positioned to be as a one-day batsman. Uh, most people, in fact, wrote him off as a, as a one-day batsman. And I remember once he came to college uh, and, in fact, spoke to us. And he said, most people wrote me off that I would never play one-day cricket. But he said, at the end of the day, I decided myself that I have to necessarily change the way that I play if I have to play one-day cricket. And most people would, in fact, argue. In fact, most of you all who follow cricket would definitely agree with me that Dravid was possibly the most technically right batsman. For such a man to change his style of batting to become one of the best one-day cricketers that India has ever produced is phenomenal. Why do I say this short little story is primarily this? Please do dream. And I want each of you all to dream big. I'm, I'm currently 38 years of age, uh, I'm turning 39. Let me put it this way. I have achieved a few things in life, but I assure you, the opportunities that you all have, I mean, in, on this call, uh, I see 33 participants on this call. The opportunity that you all 33 participants have on this call is phenomenal. Can I tell you a short little story? Do you know that a gentleman who is 39 years of age is a judge in a high court in India? I repeat, a gentleman who is 39 years of age is a judge in one of the high courts of India. At the end of the day, please do understand, please do understand one aspect. You all are living in a generation where the opportunities is immense. The avenues that you all have are enormous. And for which reason, I would only urge you all dream big. The way the world is changing, I mean, for example, the way the world is changing, I mean, who knows? Like I mentioned to you about the story of somebody rubbing shoulders with Bill Gates, that could be a reality. And at the end of the day, right now, courtesy the lockdown, physical presence is no more required. If you're good, people will talk to you. If you're not good, stay at home. So that's the reason why I clearly urge you all saying that if you all take your study seriously, point number one, you'll take the CS course seriously. Let me assure you, and I'm saying this categorically as well, with a sense of responsibility, that when you come to my age at 38, be rest assured that if assuming Sherry Human was, let's say, at X, I assure you that you will at least be 10 times X, because that is the kind of opportunities that are that is there. In fact, God has blessed me with a son. My son is four years old. Um, and I have a daughter as well. She's, she's one and a half years old. The opportunity that the two of them have, I mean, again, is immense. If I were to put, they have far more greater opportunity than what you all have. And for which reason, I would clearly urge each of you who are there on this call today saying that please do understand one aspect, that the opportunity that you have is immense. The world has quite frankly shrunk. Whether you like it or not, I'm at my home right now, y'all are at your home right now, we are having this conversation right now. For example, I've had a few discussions with some of the leading, uh, leading individuals in the industry, which have been primarily over a Zoom call. The world has become a much more smaller place, and for which reason I would clearly each of, urge each of you saying that in the next two to three years, y'all will actually define where you are going to head. And I'm saying this again, in the next two to three years, Y'all will define where you are going to head. And for which reason, I would urge each of you on this call saying that take the next two to three years really, really seriously. If in the next two to three years, y'all are able to complete the CS course, for example, point number one, and do a few more additional courses, point number two, take my word for it. The opportunity that will arise three years hence is immense. So very quickly, without... Uh, without digressing any further, very briefly to talk on the structure of the course. Um, if you have completed your law, then you don't have to do what you call as the CS foundation. If you have cleared your 12th standard exam, and that's where you are right now, you have to pass something called a CS foundation. I repeat, CS foundation. This exam has primarily, rather this, uh, the foundation stream 
has primarily four papers, which is which is paper one is on business environment and law, paper two is on business management, paper three is on business economics, and paper four is on fundamentals of accounting and auditing. How do you clear the CS Foundation exam? CS Foundation exam primarily requires a good conceptual knowledge, a good conceptual knowledge of your 12th standard syllabus, which is, uh, if you're following CBSE, 12th standard syllabus is perfect. Plus, let's say, if you can go, let's say, go for a specific coaching, great. So insofar as passing the CS Foundation is concerned, the material that the CS Institute gives is perfect. If you can go for coaching, nothing like, nothing like it. Galaxy 8 has raised his hand. Uh, is there anything that is there anything that uh, okay? I think that was by by error. So CS Foundation coming back again. CS Foundation has four papers. The uh, the material that you need to pass those papers are primarily one the in books that the institute gives you. N number two would be the um, your basic conceptual knowledge, which is your 12th standard material. And number three, if you can go for coaching, nothing like it. This should suffice to pass your CS Foundation. CS Foundation is primarily an MCQ. It's, it's in my view, it's not a very difficult exam. It is something which is very easy to, to get through. You pass the CS Foundation exam, then you come to what you call as the CS executive level. So first is the foundation, then comes the executive level. Now the executive level primarily comprises of eight papers. So the I won't get into the details of the papers, but very briefly, the crux of the papers primarily revolve around law. So when you say law, what all does it include? It includes aspects on the companies on the Companies Act. It includes aspects on interpretation of statutes, on the General Clauses Act, on the aspects of the Civil Procedure Code, the Criminal Procedure Code, Indian Penal Code, the Evidence Act. Boom. Please note, the laws are primarily from the angle of corporate governance. For example, if there's a fraud that happens in a company, what are the related laws that you would look into? So it, the objective is to give you an all-encompassing knowledge on the various laws that a CS would in his day-to-day -day life come across. For example, let's say there's a check bounce case. A director has signed a check that has bounced. A CS should obviously have knowledge on what are the pro provisions in the Negotiable Instruments Act that deal with a check bounce case. So the objective is that you get clarity on the laws relevant to the performance of your official duties. The second limb of the CS Foundation course, rather sorry, the CS Executive course, apart from the angle of law, is on taxation. So you, you tend to acquire specialized knowledge on direct and indirect taxes. Then obviously there is an element of accounting as well that, uh, that you all will have to study as well. So this sort of gives you, an, gives you a, a framework on the broad context of the aspects that are covered in the CS executive program. And to me, again, this is not a very difficult exam to get through. I mean, I'm telling you this, uh, please don't think that I'm a nerd and for the fact that I'm a nerd, it's, I'm saying this, uh, saying that it's easy. It is genuinely easy. Uh, I, there are simple tricks to pass this exam. Anyhow, this is not a, this is not a discussion on how to pass the CS exams. This is just to talk to you on about the course. But let me assure you, clearing the exam in first attempt is not at all a difficult task. Um, I, was, I was a rank holder, but divorce that, it isn't, a difficult, it isn't a difficult course to get through. So you finish your CS foundation, you finish your CS executive, then comes the last thing, which is your CS professional course. Now, the CS professional course is primarily divided into three modules. Each module primarily comprises of three papers each. Again, it's just one level, rather a few le levels in addition to what you have studied in the CS executive program. For example, if you've studied, let's say, corporate law, let's say Companies Act 2013 in the CS executive, when you come to the professional, the game changes. It's like from a cricketing, cricketing balance, moving from a Ranji Trophy to playing 
one day cricket with the national team uh, and i put cs foundation as playing let's say um, state level cricket at the end of the day the, the rules of the game are the same once you come to cs professional it's about acquiring specialized knowledge it's about acquiring specialized knowledge in the various subjects that you hither to dealt with in the cs executive program now one thing which is very which is very good about the cs professional course and i say this uh, for the fact that uh, i have also looked studied the other two courses as well uh, out of the nine papers in your cs professional course two papers are is an open book exam what do i mean by open book you can carry your book to the exam and then refer it and then answer to me there is no added advantage if you haven't read the book but nonetheless if you have read the book it's a lot more easier you don't have to mock the entire thing so that to that extent uh, does sort of assuage um, the concern that a student would have so the two papers where you can carry your book and enter the exam is on the topic of what you call as multidisciplinary case studies where there is a case study being given to you you can carry your books as long as you've read the book answering that question isn't difficult then the cs program now gives you eight optional subjects okay for example it has for example it has with respect to taxation it has with respect to the <clears throat> insolvency and bankruptcy code so you can choose the subject where you want to specialize in let's say you've chosen the in, the insolvency bankruptcy code so that subject becomes your optional paper and that optional paper you're permitted to carry the bare act for your exam so i've dealt with i've dealt with the ca course the cs course uh, i'm sorry why should one do the cs course i have also dealt with the structure of the cs course the brief structure is you have the foundation foundation typically would step in if you've completed your 12th standard you don't have a graduate degree then you have to do the foundation course if you have completed the graduate degree you are exempted from doing the foundation course you have to do the stage 2 the stage 2 is what you call as cs executive the third stage coming from coming back to my example of cricket from uh, district level to ranji trophy to one day so district level is your foundation ranji trophy is your executive one day cricket is the professional is the professional course cs professional course in the cs professional course again like i mentioned nine subjects distributed in three modules each three papers in each in each module now what are the skills required to be a good cs i don't intend that this turns out to be a gyan session and please uh, if it turns out to be a gyan session my wife will get extremely irritated but i want to make us an an appeal to your students sitting on this on this webinar again i'm going back to what i mentioned earlier the opportunity that you all have is launch please dream and i'm telling you unless you dream you will never even think of achieving those dreams and i often make a statement in 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 my in some of the public forums that i that i that i attend and i'm saying this with a lot of sincerity of heart in fact for those of you who are on this call um a short little story and with that i'll i'll, I'll, I'll with that i'll possibly wind up so i come from a, i come from a, i come from a from a very typical christian background my father is a is a retired is officer um i had a to a certain extent a troubled childhood quite frankly my parents wrote me off as a as a child um i you i mean i was um i mean i have uh, i have done things which which are best which are best left unsaid and in fact my father in fact and i see this as well in my 10th standard exam um i i mean my, my marks were really really horrible and the reason why i took commerce and with all honesty of heart was for the simple reason that i didn't get good grades to take science as a stream of education quite frankly i hated biology because i could never dream of of possibly suturing a a frog and for me the the very sight of blood itself is uh, i mean i would get pukish so i 
So if somebody were to ask me, why did you take commerce? For me, it was very, very simple. Uh, I took commerce because I didn't get good grades in science. I mean, that was in an era in the late 90s, which is very different now. Now the story, stories have changed. Now commerce is becoming the place to go. I took the commerce course. Uh, in fact, my father, in fact, came back and, in fact, he made a statement to me saying that, Sherry, um, whatever you wish to achieve, you will have to do it on your own merit. I will not let you use the name IAS, which I have, for you, for you to get any additional advantage. And that's the reason why there was a total sea change in my life. And I decided that if, if at all I have to do something in my life, I mean, I have to take this as a matter of responsibility and decide to work towards it. And for which I want to make a, a short little statement to you. Uh, some of like some of you all may know me on this call. I didn't clear my CA in my first attempt. I cleared my CA in my second attempt. Um, my company secretary ship course, I failed in my intermediate exam in my first in my first attempt, but then I, I passed and I got I passed the final with a rank. I've gone through a I've gone through a series of failures in my, in my life. But one thing which I want to say here is, if you keep moving, and please hear me very carefully on this, if you keep moving, luck will come your way. If you don't move, luck is never going to come your way. And that's the reason why I say this: keep moving. Keep learning. If you do that, for sure, luck will come your way. Number two is having the tenacity and the need for survival. If that strong intent is there to survive, I don't see a reason why clearing this course is, is a difficulty. Very quickly to, to wind up, I, I would sort of just, uh, sort of just, uh, there was a slight, I mean, I sort of just deviated a bit, but I'll come back to the, the, the topic once again. The essential skills that you require in terms of being a good company secretary is one, dedication and, and a lot of hard work. One, without dedication, without hard work, I'm assuring you, nobody needs you, nobody wants you. And especially in this day and age where, uh, where people are looking for good professionals. And I'm telling you, in my interactions with the CEOs, CFOs, and directors of company, there is actually dearth of good professionals. So if you're good, people are just willing to grab you. And take my word for it, assuming let's say you clear the CS course, the minimum starting salary that you would get would range between let's say six to six to nine lakhs. Minimum, I'm saying this is the minimum salary. Let's talk of a simple situation where let's say you get a salary of let's say six lakhs. I'm, I'm taking a lower figure here, six lakhs, which roughly comes to 50,000 rupees a month. Imagine at the age of let's say 22, 23, 24, they're earning a salary of six lakh rupees a month. Most engineers will find it very difficult to draw this kind of salary after having studied their, I mean, studied or not studied, that's a separate discussion. Uh, someone who clears his engineering is not even assured of a, of a job which will at least give him six lakhs. So I have, in my experience, come across engineers who, who possibly do work in the range of, let's say, two to three lakhs. And I'm not demeaning them here, but that's the actual reality of life. By the way, I know a student who's cleared a CS course, uh, who's working with a, with a multinational bank, aged 25 years, he's on, my, he's on my LinkedIn. I'm not stating his name right now for the fact that this is a recorded session, and he, I mean, a uh, recorded session. Um, he's roughly earning a salary of 16 lakhs at the age of, of 24, and he's one of my students as well. So the, the kind of income that this course gives you apart from the fact that you've got the option of rubbing shoulders with the who's who, is, is phenomenal. The second skill that I think is required to clear this course is one, good knowledge. Let me tell you for those who, and I'm telling you this for the fact that I've cleared law. Clearing law, as I say, entering law is easy, exiting law is easy. But insofar as CS is concerned, entering is easy, exit is difficult. The only way that you can make your exit as easy as your entry is if you build up a good knowledge on corporate law, on accounting, on taxation, and auditing. Number three that you need as a prerequisite in terms of being a good company secretary is excellent written and oral communication skills. And that's the reason why I would advocate 
please inculcate the habit of reading. Uh, read, for example, your newspapers. Read, for example, the text of judgments. Read, for example, uh, magazines that you will go. For example, let's say the, the Harvard Business Review. Look at good niche content. Please develop the habit of reading. My intention is not to say that you all turn out to be Shashi Tarus of the world, but nonetheless, it is imperative that you all build up very good written and oratory skills. The next aspect, which obviously, which will get inculcated in due course of time is good organizational management and negotiation skills. For example, in the example that I mentioned in the start of my session, I spoke of a listed company where there was a company secretary. His whole mandate was very simple. This listed company was looking at acquiring a Russian company. Bear in mind, this was one of the largest acquisitions that happened in South, in, in South India. The entire acquisition of the Russian company was spearheaded, I'm talking about in the early 2000s, by a gentleman aged 36 years of age, fairly young, please understand, fairly young, who was a complete secretary by profession. So his discussion was what? One, understanding whether I should buy the target company or not, point number one. Point number two, evaluating the target company. Point number three is, does it make business sense in terms of acquiring that target company? Number four is, where do I get the money to invest? Number five is convincing the shareholders of this company, saying that, saying that this is a good acquisition, we should acquire this company. And number five was executing the deal. Because it's, there's no fund in terms of identifying a target, and then the whole deal spurts apart. This entire transaction that I just mentioned to you right now was actually spearheaded by a company secretary. And for which reason I would urge each of you all on this call here, if you all have cleared your 12th standard exam, please seriously evaluate CS course as a course to reckon with. For those who are doing law and you all intend to pursue corporate law, and I'm saying this whether you intend to get into litigation or you all intend to. Um, or let's say be a non-litigation lawyer. CS is mandatory. Now, if you look at the, some of the large firms, the large firms, let's say like AZB, um, or let's say Amar Chand, there is a clear differentiating factor between a, a, a lawyer soul and a lawyer plus CS. In my experience, for example, if, I, if you deal with the, like, the larger firms, and I deal with them because so like, I handle some of their litigation cases, most of the lawyers that I've dealt with in, in some of these big law firms are lawyers who have completed the CS course or who have got an additional degree to their name. And hence, I would clearly advocate <coughs> that doing the CS course is imperative. Um, so with these broad views in mind, and last but not the least, for those who are pursuing graduation here, um, please do seriously look at CS course as an option to reckon with. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, like to end the discussion. Uh, I'd like to end the discussion. So very briefly, in the first part of the discussion, I went into why CS. We got into the two aspects. One, in terms of the fact, in the event you're in employment, what are the opportunities that you have? Number two, if you decide to, if you decide to pursue, uh, if you decide to work independently. That was one aspect that we dealt with. The second key topic that we dealt with in this subject was the structure of the course, primarily three. We have the foundation, you have the executive and the professional. Then we got into the skills required to do the course. And most importantly, like I said, was the element of dedication and hard work. For which, as, as most of us would have heard right in our school days, there is no substitute for hard work. I mean, this is a time that I will tell my son, and I'm sure my son will tell my grandson as well. And this is a time that is going to continue for eternity, that there is no substitute for hard work. Number three is the aspect of, please inculcate the habit of reading. And something which I find, which is an aspect which is quite frankly missing, um, and I don't mean to say this as, a generation, as an issue of generational gap, is the lack of reading. Um, Please inculcate the habit of reading. If you tend to read automatically, 
your knowledge on the subject also undergoes a, a drastic change. Uh, with this, I have, I have bound up the my talk on the CS course, uh, and I hope that uh, each of you all have at least gained something out of this, and at least I have at least beckoned your thoughts, or rather pinched you, or rather nudged you to look at CS as an as an option or a course that you all should look into. I'll get into the question. There are a few questions that have that have come my way right now. Uh, there's a question from Mesban Anwar. Uh, so would you say it's necessarily the other way around, taking LLB after taking the CS course? Good question. Mesban, um, um, the answer to that primarily revolves on one aspect. Um, if you intend to litigate, like the way I am litigating right now, I would say that LLB helps. For, I mean, to put that, you definitely need an LLB degree to your name. A CS plus LLB, either ways, I mean, if you have LLB plus CS or CS plus LLB, you, I mean, you put the formula any way that you like. They are highly complementary with each other. So, Mesban, if you are doing your CS course, if you are doing your CS course, I, for one, will clearly advocate you should do LLB as well. Because at the end of the day, they are highly complementary in nature. Uh, LLB gives you a very generic overview of the subject. CS gives you a specialized, a specialized opening, or rather a specialized view, insofar as subjects which are specific to the CS syllabus. But nonetheless, for the fact that they are complementary to each other, if you are doing your CS course, <clears throat> I would clearly advocate that you should do LLB as well. If you say, okay, fine, I intend to practice as a company secretary or I intend to work as a company secretary in an office. I mean, that's something that you should, I mean, you should do that. If, 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 you, if you were to ask me this question, I would say, I would say a big yes. Uh, has 8119, I wish I knew your name, but nonetheless, uh, Mr. X or Mrs. X. So whether CS Foundation program is equal to CS company secretary's educate, executive entrance text. Um, I'm not Sherry, sure. Sherry, Sherry, right. there is a uh, latest uh, change. Uh, very right. recently, it had taken place. Am I audible? Right, 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 right. Mm. Uh, that CA Foundation is no more. Acha, acha. Mm. Uh, and uh, CZ is introduced. CS acha, acha. Executive Entrance Test. Acha, 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 acha. And uh, it's not a substitute for uh, direct entry. Mm. All everyone in the world who is uh, intending to do CS. We'll have to do C set. Acha. So irrespective of whether uh, you're a graduate, irrespective of whether you're a graduate or not. Yeah. The only Acha. exemption exception to this is CA qualifieds and CMA qualifieds for the Acha. right time for the time Acha. now. Acha. It's a latest development. Acha, Acha. And Acha. even Acha. in the site, changes are not made. Acha, Acha. ICSI site changes are not made at most places. Correct, correct. Uh, and I'm the another first another... Uh, the Sorry. first exam was scheduled in May. Acha. Lockdown, nothing took place, and it was postponed to July. Again postponed. Uh, November again postponed. Now we are now hoping December. it for December. Nice, nice. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I didn't know about this because I uh, checked the because, site. In the site, I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, even in the circulars issued by ICSI, mm. they still use the word foundation. Acha, correct, correct. They correct. themselves right. forget the fact that it is CSET. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, there was a, there were a couple of times when I uh, pointed it out to a senior CS mm. who pointed it to the institute and uh, got it rectified. Acha, 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 acha. Uh. So <laughs> has 8119, I think Jyoti Madam has answered it correctly. Um, so you got the answer from her. I think uh, from the times that I studied, for example, when I did the CS course, uh, we had the foundation you had we had four papers then then you had the intermediate which had eight papers uh final which had eight papers so eight has now become nine nine correct 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 yeah so and the funniest have... thing uh for c set is that mm. 150 marks written mm. 50 marks oral interview Achha. that through both or uh, both these things are through online Achha. 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 that is how they proposed it Achha. Achha. but Achha. it didn't work out Pandemic. Right, 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 right. right, right. Thanks, thanks for that, right. I 
you know, quite frankly, I didn't know about this entity. This is not a Because it well. is not there even in the site. Uh, they use the word a CS foundation correct, even now. Correct, 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 correct. Even the circulars issued by them, they use the word CS foundation. Right, right, ma'am. Right, the only difference is that it's not an entrance for plus two, it's an entrance for everyone in the world. Right, ma'am. Right, 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 ma'am. Except uh, CA qualifieds and CMA India qualifieds. Right, ma'am. Right, ma'am. Got it, ma'am. So at least I think the advice to all of you all on this call is please, if you are not doing it, please start immediately, please finish it immediately before the syllabus changes again. Uh, at this point, it's a lot more easier to clear this. Uh, so so has 8119, uh, Madam Jyoti Ma'am has answered your question very succinctly. I won't venture into giving any further comments. Uh, there's one question which has come from Smita Mohan. Considering CS is mainly theoretical. Um, Smita, if a CS hears the statement that is merely theoretical, I assure you they will cry. Uh, considering CS is mainly theoretical knowledge of English and writing skills with respect to how important is it and how does one prepare for it? Now, Smita, uh, the, the only way to, uh, one, CS is not mainly theoretical. In fact, that is not correct. Um, true, there's a lot of theory, but there's a lot of practice as well. For example, if you look at accounting, if you look at tax, uh, there is a lot of practical aspects to it. Uh, so it's not largely theoretical. Uh, I would say that it's a blend of both because now if you ask me, for, uh, in fact, I happen to see the exams uh, the last attempts exams, they have fairly interspersing theoretic, theoretical knowledge with practical application as well. So it's no longer something where you sort of mug it to your head and then you go to your exam and then vomit it out. There is a need for great conceptual clarity. Now, the question that you, the latter part of your question is very, very important, is how do you, how do you uh, improve your knowledge of English and writing skills? Very, very good question. Uh, the answer to that, Smita, uh, is in one aspect. You have to read, and there is no substitute for reading. Please don't misunderstand this next statement. I'm saying this as a generic comment to all on this call. One of the ways to improve your English is going through a book called Renan Martin. Uh, for example, when I did my schooling, in fact, uh, yeah, I, I am in schools that are there right now. I don't see schools. Um, so making Renan Martin a necessary prerequisite. Please note, in fact, uh, in fact, even Shashi Tharoor in one of his interviews, in fact, did mention about Renan Martin. So you must understand, a gentleman like Shashi Tharoor itself values the book Renan Martin. I would, if for those of you who would like to improve your English and say, okay, fine, I want my English communication skills to be good, both written and oral, uh, both written and oral, Renan Martin is a very good book to improve your English especially in terms of knowing your correct tense, uh, knowing uh, the manner of delivery, Renan Martin to me is perfect. But nonetheless, having said so much, there is no substitute for reading. So for example, the question that you may ask me, sir, what do you read? Okay. Um, so I read a lot of motivational books. Um, of late, I've got a little spiritual in life, so I'm reading a few spiritual books as well. Uh, the need to stay my profession requires me to read judgments, so I tend to read judgments as well. Uh, but Smita, you can't read books like Tinkle, Chanda Mama, you know, <laughs> <laughs> those are books that you have to give it a pass. Uh, you have to now start reading books that are a little more, that are a little more intellectual. For example, one paper that I, that I like to read is the paper called The Hindu. Um, the second paper that I would read is possibly a business line, because there at the end of the day, you tend to improve your English as well. Uh, but nonetheless, inculcate the habit of reading. And I say that books is a man's best friend. And once you inculcate the habit of reading, that just that just sticks to you for the rest of your life. Now, so that is the only uh, advice that I can give you with respect to improving your, your English. Uh, Shibar Rajiv's question has been answered. Yeah. Sir, I wish to know how did you manage to complete all three? Yes, CMA and LLB, how did it take? Can you briefly explain the journey of this big achievement? Mr. Alfred Joy, thank you very much for that uh, for that sweet comment. Um, what do I say? Uh, I mean, I don't want to sound like a like like a philosopher, 
ബട്ട് എറ്റ് ദി എൻഡ് ഓഫ് ദി ഡേ ലൈക്ക് ഞാൻ ആദ്യം പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ തന്നെ ഞാൻ ഇച്ചിരി ഇച്ചിരി മലയാളത്തിൽ ഒന്ന് പറയട്ടെ എന്റെ എന്റെ അച്ഛൻ മോർ സ്പെസിഫിക് ഒട്ടും വിചാരിച്ചില്ല ഞാൻ ഇപ്പോൾ പഠിക്കുന്ന ഒട്ടും വിചാരിച്ചില്ല പക്ഷെ ഒരു വാശി കാരണം എന്റെ മനസ്സിലൊരു വാശി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഞാൻ അച്ഛൻ ഞാൻ ഐ ഹാവ് ടു ഷോ ഹലോ ഐ ഹാവ് ടു സമോ ദി അതർ ഷോ മൈ മൈ പ്രൂവ് ടു മൈ പേരൻസ് ദൈ കൻ അച്ചീവ് സംതിങ് ഇൻ ലൈഫ് അതിന്റെ അടിസ്ഥാനം വെച്ചിട്ടാണ് ഞാൻ പഠിച്ചിട്ടുള്ളത് പക്ഷെ ഞാൻ ഒരു ചെറിയൊരു കഥ എന്ന് പറയട്ടെ സി എ പാസ് ആവാൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സി എസ് പാസ് ആവാൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സി എം എ പാസ് ആവാൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എൽ എൽ ബി പാസ് ആവാനായിട്ട് ഒരു മിഡ് മിടുക്കിന്റെ ആവേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല അത് ഇത്ര സ്മാർട്ട് ആയാൽ മതി ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഞാൻ എന്റെ ഞാൻ എന്റെ 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 ചെറുപ്രായത്തിൽ ഞാനൊക്കെ സ്കൂളിൽ പഠിക്കാവുന്ന സമയത്ത് നമ്മുടെ ഒരു കളി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഡബ്ല്യു ഡബ്ല്യു എഫിന്റെ ഒരു കളി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ സം ഓഫ് യുട്ട് നോ ഡബ്ല്യു ഡബ്ല്യു എഫ് വിസ് ടു ഡീ വിത്ത് കാർഡ്സ് ഡബ്ല്യു ഡബ്ല്യു എഫ് കാർഡ്സ് we now we don't those are all stories of age of of old aa samayam ikki chela naalam naalam thogarundu acha cash theratha kaaranam undu for fact that my father wouldn't give money njan padike ene veedna totta adutha kada poyitte njan aa cards mathram moshtikku varunu kada nu paraya or bubble gum medikan nerthu or card free aayirunnu ashe acha paraya acha he won't give me money to buy bubble gum so in the matter i have to some of the other get cards because cards are collected there so we used to make a little bit of pocket money those days uh, so then my challenge was how do i get these cards from the shop when i did a cherry or kali on market i used to go to the shop and some of the other steal those cards i mean at the end of the day i apologize in fact i have subsequently apologized to the shopkeeper as well um, but the mood point here but the mood point here is everything in life if you are not if you work hard point of one and more but number 2 is that you work smartly e ca course alling in cs course alling in cma course alling in llb course idu padichedukkan yaadhu oru difficulty illa thoru kaariyanu idu vidum vidikkan avanu yaadhu avashyam as long as you have the dedication and the drive saying that whatever happens i will pass for example if you say it's like for example an army a person in the army going for a war for example there's a video that has come on youtube uh, on youtube uh, of a couple of army jawans who, who are leaving their families uh, and going for a war and i see a very beautiful movie that has inspired me a lot is the movie uri you are right uh, and if you see that movie uh, the soldier tells his mother i will come back after the war whatever be whatever happens i will come back adu pole thane irikkanam nammude unvesham and whatever happens yen enga vannalum i will somehow the other pass this course and again let me assure you you will not even pass i mean that you can take it for granted but you will get a rank as well adinu oru cherukada oru sutrakal undu vashe oru unvesham undavo endu vannalum i will somehow the other pass this course aa vaashi endengil to clear this exam is not at all difficult ഇത് ചുമ്മാ ഒരു ഒരു ഞാൻ ഒരു ജാടായിട്ടല്ല പറയുന്നത് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഞാൻ സത്യം പറയുന്നത് ഐ ഇസ് ഓപ്പൺ വൺ ഹൗ വിൽ ഐ പാസ് ബട്ട് സംഭവം ഞാൻ ആദ്യം പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ തന്നെ ഇഫ് യു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് മൂവിംഗ് ലക്ക് വിൽ കം യോ വേ ഇറ്റ് കുബി ദ ഫാക്ട് ഐ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ലക്ക് ബട്ട് ദ ഗുഡ് പോയിന്റ് ഇയർ ഇസ് ഐ കെപ്റ്റ് ഓൺ മൂവിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ഹെൻസ് ലക്ക് കീ മൈ വേ ലാസ്റ്റ് ഇസ് ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഫ്രം മെസ് ബാൻ അൻവേഴ്സർ വിച്ച് ഡിഗ്രി ഇസ് ഗുഡ് ടു ടേക്ക് അലോങ് വിത്ത് സി എസ് കോസ് സി എസ് വിത്ത് ബി ബി എസ് സി എസ് വിത്ത് ബി കോം uh mesman my answer to that would be on the fact that for the fact that you have taken cs and for the fact that cs has a lot of uh, a, a, an accounting background bcom is far more advisable than bba the reason is in bba the importance given to accounting is not as much as what is given in bcom and for which reason i would say that bcom is more complementary to cs than bba with cs so to answer your question uh, for example i have come from a bcom, BCOM background uh, i have done my completed my bcom i have completed my mcom as well uh, then my llb my pgd bcl then my ca cs cwa so these are the kind of degree that i have but at the end of the day bcom does help especially if you are pursuing a, a career in in corporate law or for that matter in accounting so with this uh, uh, i i'll wind this conversation i want to profusely thank logic for this opportunity that uh, logic has given me uh, thank you jyoti ma'am you are always an inspiration and you will always continue to remain an inspiration for me 
Uh, Hari, thank you thank for you, Sherry. Hari, thank you for wonderfully organizing this course, uh, this short little discussion. And I want to thank each of your participants here who've, who've joined me on this Monday evening when it's raining outside. Uh, instead of having a cup of coffee, you'll have decided to come and hear this lecture from me. I deeply appreciate that. Uh, and I pray that God will bless each of you on this call as well. Uh, stay safe, uh, take care of your parents, uh, and God bless each one of you. God bless each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I know you have a very busy schedule, but then uh, you could spend some time with us. And I really thank you for that on behalf of Logic. And I hope the session has been useful for everyone. Uh, if participants, if you have anything to say, you can kindly respond in chat. I, I, I mean, thank you, Leo. Thank you, uh, Gabli Godly. Thank you, Nafil, Atila, Galaxy G8. I wish I knew your name. Uh, Shiba, thank you very much. I hope I've inspired you a bit. Um, oh, thank you, AC. Uh, Ms. Paul, thank you. Thank you very much as well. Yeah, yeah. Abra, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Are, very sweet of you. Very sweet of you. God bless you. Okay, everyone, have a wonderful evening ahead, and thanks once again for attending this session. Uh, thank Sherry, you, sir, thank have a thank wonderful you so much, evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Hari. Okay. Thank, thank you, you Sherry. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you. Hari. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Logic School of Management.